Welcome back to Historic Forest. Normally I do videos about history, but today I'm going to do something just a little bit different. I'm going to build a trailer that I bought from Northern Tool. This is the Northern Tool aluminum 5x8 trailer. All right, I've laid out my uh, trailer bed on braces to keep it up in the air and I set everything in place to make sure I had it lined up and I used my square edge here to uh, make sure the whole thing was square. Now when you're lining this thing up one thing you have to keep in mind is what is the front of the trailer and what is the back of the trailer. Now this is the marker light for the front of the trailer. It has two little screw holes on it and there is a place in the side rails for the wires to go through that's a large hole. So when you look, you'll see that there are two holes on the side that line up with this. That is gonna be the front of your side rails. Now in the back of the trailer, you have your lights. They would go into this box and the box has two large holes that you will use to bolt this to the outside rail. Now, when you look at the back of the trailer, there are not two small holes right here. There is no small holes and two large holes. So remember that when you're lining up your rails so that you get everything straight. Two large holes on the side rail, they go in the back. The two small holes with one large hole in the center is the front so that you can put in this light. When you are mounting your cross rails, you will notice that on one side, it has three holes on it with one hole in the center. This will be facing the top of the trailer. But when I've set this up, everything is upside down. So keep that in mind. Now, on the bottom of the trailer, you will have the end hole that goes into this rail, then another hole, and then another hole, and there is no center hole. So you've got to keep that in mind for all of these rails. And the instructions are a little cryptic when you've got to figure this out. So each rail goes inside like this, and you line up your holes. And now you'll have a bolt for each of these holes. Now on the bottom of the trailer, which is facing up right now, you drop in your bolt in the end, and then you'll put a washer in, and then the nut. And they go in like this. And so you kind of just gotta feel your way to get them to, to line up and start. like that. Now, then you go to the other side and you do the same thing. You line it up and then put your bolt in. And then you put the nut in and it'll work all right. Now the reason you must have on the bottom of the trailer, which is facing up, you don't have the center hole when you look at all these. Now this rail, the one behind me, face one direction, and then this one faces the other direction, so it'll match up to the fourth rail, which faces the same way as these two. And then as you go back, the open part will look like this again. 
And this is important because when you finish bolting all this together, then you've got to put on the front bars of the trailer. And this is when this hole will line up and a hole back here will line up and the two will go to the coupler. So I'm not gonna bore you with putting in every single nut and bolt along this frame. So we're gonna pause the video and when we come back, all these nuts and bolts will be in the frame and we'll go from there. All right, all right, the uh, last thing in section one of the assembly manual is to place on this bracket which the springs will attach to and that'll connect the wheels to the frame. Now, when you put this on, it's gonna line up these two holes with these two bolts right here. So all we have to do is put this on top, drop a screw in in the top and the bottom. Then we take our washer and our nut and we put it on under here. Now I'm not gonna bore everybody with the uh, tightening of the nuts and bolts, but you do the same thing on the other side and that'll complete section one of the manual. The next step in building this trailer, according to the instruction manual, is to put on the fender. Now the fender is connected like that and you bolt it together. And then once you've got that connected, you take this bracket and you mount it down right here. Now, I'm not gonna be doing that because I'm planning to put larger tires on the trailer and it won't fit under that fender. So I'm gonna skip that part of the instructions. Now the next thing they tell you to do is put on the wheel assemblies and the uh, axle. And to do that, first we've gotta put on the spring. Now the spring takes two bolts to put on, a smaller one and a larger one. And there are almost all of the nuts Almost all of the nuts in this kit are the same size, the nuts and bolts, uh, but there are three sets that are different size. This is the largest size, and this is the next to the smallest size. And that's what we're gonna use to put on the spring. Okay, now when you put your spring on, you wanna send it through this little hole here. So we'll put it in, and that should be towards the front of the trailer. And we'll send that through to go through the holder here bracket. Put on the nut. And on the back side, you'll see it has this curved piece here. That sits towards the back of the trailer and it allows the spring to flex as you're going down the road. And the bolt sits just above that to keep it in the bracket. So we'll put that on. Now I'll tighten these nuts and bolts up on this side and put on the spring on the other side. And it'll be just like this side. Now, when you receive your kit, you will have two tires and wheels in the kit and they will have the hubs on the wheels. So we need to take these off so we can connect these to the axle. So let me do that now. I've already loosened the lug nuts so they'll come off easily.
Now do this on a clean surface because you don't want your hubs to get dirty while you're doing this because they are open in the back. So you want them to stay clean. So be careful when you do this. All right, so I have my five lug nuts off. Put those where I can find them. Take off the tire. And now we have our wheel hub assembly. Now, once we have this, we've got to get this cap off of it. So to do that, I've got my hammer and a screwdriver. Now, I've put my nuts back on my hub and we need to get this cap off. This is the dust cap that, pro that protects the bearings on the inside. And to get it off, I'm going to need a hammer and a screwdriver. I've also put on rubber gloves because there's grease in there. So, we very carefully put down our dust cover and we tap it just to get this to get this loose, you have to tap it. can be a little tricky. Tapping it to get the screwdriver underneath so that you can lift the cap. Now when I've got it started better, just going to turn it as we go around it. Work the cap off. Okay, so I've got my cap off, and as you can see, the bearings are inside and they've already been greased when it comes in. I don't know how good that grease job is, so probably after I put this together, before I take it out, I'll repack the bearings and they set right in here. Now we have to attach this to our axle. Now that I've got my hubs ready, it's time to put on the axle. On top of the spring, you'll see a notch that sticks up here and there's a hole in the bottom of the axle. You wanna get that the axle in that notch raised spot. Then we have a plate and two U-bolts. And the plate, <coughs> when it goes underneath, there is another raised spot underneath so that it will stay in place here too. So let's get these U-bolts on. Now, when you put them in, they'll only go one direction because the other way is too short. Find that notch. Okay, there we go. Put it across. Put on my washer. And then a nut. Here we've got the assembly on. Now I'm not going to worry all with doing all the tightening, but this is what it'll look like when it's finished. And this will hold your axle to the spring and keep it tight and in place because there is a raised spot underneath and a raised spot under the axle. So it'll lock right in place and won't go anywhere. 
All right, now that I've got my axle attached to the springs, now it's time to put on the hubs. And this is where I put the gloves back on because this could get a little messy. Okay, now you make sure that you got all your bearings in here good. And like I say, coming from the factory, I don't think they put enough uh, grease in these things. So before I really take this trailer on the road, I'm gonna repack it. So we take the nut off the end of the axle. slide get this to slide in once you have the nut on and you tighten it till it's hand tight then just back off just a little bit and then you put in your cutter pin and it slides right in and then you'll bend it to make sure it stays in place. But since I'm gonna repack this right after I finish uh, building it and get some more grease, uh, I'm not gonna bend it right now. Then after you do that, you just stick your cap back on so that it won't get dirty. Take off these gloves now. Then put your tire, your wheel back on. There we go. Then all I have to do is put the lug nuts back on. Then once you get all your lug nuts back on, your tire is mounted on your trailer. And then we'll be ready for the next set of steps in the instruction booklet. And I'll tighten these things up before I turn the trailer over. But for now, I'm just putting them on hand tight. All right, we're ready for the next step. Well, now it's time to move on to part four in the assembly manual. We're gonna be putting on the tow bar assembly. Now when you're doing this, remember your trailer is sitting upside down. So you want to make sure all of your riding is upside down. Because if you have it right side up, when you turn your trailer over, it'll be upside down. You don't want people to look at your tra trailer weird for the rest of your life. So, the riding is upside down and placed it about where it wants to go, get out a nut and bolt. Now you'll find two holes from the end is where you want this to go through. So I'll drop that in and I'll get that started. Now that I've got that one in, I'll get another nut and bolt. And back here, you'll find another open hole between this bar and the spring. I'm going to line it up, drop that in. And get that one started. Now, 
don't want to tight, tighten up everything right away because we've got to get everything to line up. So now I'll come over to the next one. have the bottom plate. Now the bottom plate is going to go right here. So we've got to line up all these holes and put nuts and bolts in them. There. Now, I don't want to tighten all these up because according to the instructions, you're supposed to have it a little loose so when we turn the trailer over to do step five in the instructions, the, uh, we can make all the final adjustments on this part of the trailer. So I'm going to tighten all these bolts up a little bit and then I'll be turning the trailer over, which I have to wait for someone to give me a hand. I've got the trailer turned over now, so we can move on to the next step. The next step is going to be to attach the coupler to the top bracket. Now, to do this, we'll use these nuts and bolts, and these are not the same size as all the rest of them. So first I gotta get the holes lined up. There we are. And we got one through. So get this started. Now I'm gonna have to connect this the base and it doesn't look like I have room to put the uh, bolts on the, the base but the instructions say to do this first but I'm going to set a couple of nuts in there a couple bolts I should say into the coupler plate because once I tighten this down, I won't be able to get to it very easily. So let's put those in. All right, now it says to take the chain. And what you want to do is have the chain so uh, you have it on the middle loop and it's an equal amount on both sides. Now, when you stick in this bolt, you want to connect the chain at the same time. So turn it over so I can see everything. So let's stick this in. And then feed that through. And there we are, I got it through, and I put the chain with that bolt, so now it's a part of this assembly. Stick this in. Okay, got that done now. So we'll set that over the front. Line up these two bolts that I've already got in. Stick one in that one. One in that one. There. 
See, if I hadn't put the bolts in, it'd be difficult to get those in. So now let me get those two bolts started. Now I'm not tightening anything up yet because we're going to have to make sure that this is in the center and lined up with the center of the trailer. That is going to be the final thing we do before we tighten all these things up. So in place, now I'll turn off the video and tighten it up because watching someone tighten bolts would be awful boring. Now I only have one more piece to put on this thing before we do the wiring. They call this the spare tire support bar. So I set this in and then there are two holes I have to line up. One on this side. And one on this side. So now that I've got those lined up, simply start. Ah. Big bang outside, you gotta stop for a second. At the end of the last video, you heard a large crashing sound. That was the wind blowing real hard and breaking a limb on a pine tree outside my house and dropping the limbs on my car. So it got crushed. So I haven't worked on this in a few days. So now let's get started again. We have the last section of the construction guide to go through. And what it wants you to do at this point is take your uh, light assemblies, take out the actual light, and you have a right and left side. And where you have the bar here, that's going to go on the back. So this is going to be on the right hand side of the trailer, which I'm going to put on now. Also, when I got this kit, the edges on this were rough, so I filed it down, so less likely to cut myself as I'm working on it. So I would definitely recommend filing the edges of these boxes that go on for your lights. Now the next thing you have to do is place nuts through this and then attach it to the trailer frame like so and it takes two nuts and bolts to connect this thing together also after you do that they have these little connector bars this strengthens the trailer from side to side movement. And so they go inside just in front of the light assembly. And once again, put the nuts through and get them started. And they're held together with two nuts and bolts. This will give your trailer a lot more strength for side-to-side -side motions. 
as you're going down the road. So these are very important. All right, I've got these things on and now I'm gonna tighten them up. Now that I have my bracket or the light fixture bolted on it and the cross thing's done, now it's time to put in the light assembly. And the light assembly is gonna go in here and go through these two rings and you should have the wires on top. And then I will start these nuts on the outside. Now, each of these lights is labeled once you lift them out. And they will say right side on the curb so you can't miss it. Plus it's got to line up with the holes on the side. Now when we go to wire this, the white wire that's coming out the back has got to be attached to the metal piece here with the screw. So let me go ahead and wrap that around. Oh, let me wrap it the other way. So that as this comes together, it will tighten on that wire. Now, the reason you want that white wire connected to the metal bracket that's holding the light in is because it is going to act like part of the circuit because we're going to connect our uh, basically the green and the brown are the positive ends of the circuit and the white is the negative end but they've labeled, labeled it in the instruction manual as the ground, but it's not really a ground. It's simply... Now, now we take our trailer wire, which we run along side of the trailer and separate it into two ends. And the green will match up with the green and the brown will match up to the brown. So we take these wires and we twist them together. Make sure they're good and twisted together. And then we take our little wire nuts and we will screw those on to keep this set of wires securely together to get our electrical connections. So this is pretty easy. You're just matching green to green and brown to brown. And on the other side of the trailer, you will be matching yellow to yellow and brown to brown. Because the brown wire is the running lights for the trailer and the green is the brake lights and the turn lights for the trailer. So these are all very important. It's important that we have good connections. I'm not thrilled with the quality of the wire that comes in the kit, but this is what we have. And later on, I may replace the wires but your white wire is the negative end that goes to the trailer and your actual trailer acts like part of the circuit. So you are actually electrifying the entire trailer at 12 volts, which I'd rather have a uh, negative wire running back than run it through the trailer, but that's my own personal preference. All right, now the back lights, tail lights have been hooked up. Now I've moved to the front of the trailer. Once again, I have one of these cross brackets I have to put in. So I set that in here. And the nuts and bolts for it. And it's got two. So 
So I connect these up. Now I'll have to just tighten those up in a minute. Now we have the marker lights that have to be put on the trailer. So they give you little screws for these. So let's get those two out. And when you put this in, there's a hole in the front to run your wire through. And you'll see that it can only go in one side and still fit on for you to screw it in. Put it, tighten it a little ways, put the other screw in so you can see how it lines up. Line it up with the holes. Once you got both of them lined up, you can tighten this one right up. So now we have the wires coming through the trailer so that we can connect them up to this, which is our wire that we connected in the back. Now we have to separate these wires so that we can hook it up. So now I am going to make sure I have enough room, lay them down. What I want to do is cut the two apart very carefully. All right, see how I'm pulling the two wires apart from each other like this. Now I've got to cut the brown wire in half because this is our running lights. There we go. Now I've got them cut. I want to strip these wires. Now in the kit, they give you these special clamps. They're supposed to go together. And I tried it on the other side and I couldn't get it to work for me. So I'm gonna go out and get some more uh, wire screws. And then you connect these together. You connect the brown to the brown. And then the what you've separated the brown to the white. And then you've got your wiring hooked up for this light. So I'm not going to go through all the twisting for it, but those are the last few steps because I want to wait till I have these far tightened before I put the wire in. But you get the idea. Now I only have one thing to do to complete the trailer, and that is to take the end of this. Now in the instructions it said to make sure you had at least a foot and a half here and I've got more than that. And here you have your white, which they call the ground, which completes the circuit. And so now I just have to screw this onto the trailer and there's a hole right up here in the front to screw it to. So I just put it on there.
tighten it up. And now the circuit is complete. And this is what you'll plug into your car or your truck or whatever you use to tow this with. Now all along the frame, as I've been going along, I've been using these little clips to make sure that the wires are secure. And what I will do is squeeze this onto the wire, like so. And then I simply attach it to the frame and that secures the wires to the frame so they don't fall on the ground or drag on the ground and cause a problem. Well, I hope you've enjoyed putting together this uh, Northern Tool Ultra Tow trailer. The, I chose the aluminum trailer because I wanted it to be light because I'm gonna build a teardrop or sort of a teardrop uh, trailer on top of it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, subscribe to the channel and look for the uh, series I'm going to make on building this little camper. Well, thanks for watching. See ya.